Hi, this is Dr. A with a video review on enzymes. We're going to look at CK and LDH. Okay, so I'll start with CK. So um, CK in the muscles catalyzes the reversible phosphorylation of creatine to creatine phos phosphate by ATP. What does that mean? Basically, um, it's your muscle's way to store ATP, the energy molecule, as creatine phosphate and then um, and it goes uh, the reaction can go back and forth um, the forward reaction usually occurs in the mitochondria so that is going from ATP to ADP and uh, storing the energy in the form of creatine phosphate and then the reverse reaction will occur in the cytoplasm where you have the ADP is made into ATP and, and this production of energy is necessary for muscular contractions. So it's taking that stored um, phosphor phosphate there um, in the creatine, creatine phosphate, uh, that phosphorus molecule, and adding it to ADP to make ATP. And then you use ATP in muscular contractions. So uh, there are several isoforms for creatine kinase. Um, they have two subunits, the subunit M and the B. And so you have CKMM, which is usually about 98% of the circulating CK is going to be CKMM. Coming, and that's muscle muscle coming from uh, skeletal muscle, M for muscle, and B is for brain. And then CKMB, muscle brain, that one is actually from the heart. And then CKBB is usually from the brain. So uh, the clinical significance of CK is you would expect total CK elevations after any kind of muscular injury or trauma. So think car wrecks, falls, any kind of major trauma, um, four-wheeler accidents and stuff like that. Muscular diseases such as muscular dystrophy and rhabdomyolysis will show extreme elevations. So we're looking at elevations in the like tens of thousands uh, for those, whereas um, the total CK elevation for um, just trauma and stuff, uh, maybe in the hundreds to thousands. So uh, normal CK is usually somewhere uh, less than 200. Um, we'll look at in the units and enzymatic units uh, per liter. The uh, acute myocardial infarction can also increase the total CK, but it's not going to be as uh, drastic an increase as you would see in rhabdomyolysis or uh, muscular dystrophy. The lab procedure for creatine kinase is um, a coupled enzymatic reaction in which the final step is the oxidation of NADP to NADPH, which causes a color change, which can be measured, uh, or it can be done by immunoassay, uh, and that's usually uh, CKMB is the one that's done by immunoassay. Um, and you you would check CKMB for heart attacks. It's an older test. It really has just been replaced by troponin, but some physicians still like to have that CKMB. Part of it is the CKMB will rise earlier than troponin will. And so it can be useful in that in that manner. So again, ranges um, the accepted range here is less than uh, 170 international units per liter, as less than 200. So that's kind of 200 is a good like ballpark, and it will it will vary really from one lab to the next. So uh, once you see numbers above 200 in CK, then um, you're starting to be concerned. For CK and B different ranges though are different. So high levels, you would expect uh, acute MI, so a heart attack, myocarditis, rhabdomyolysis, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, polymyositis, and dermatomyositis. Sorry about the typo right here. Uh, and then low, you will see uh, in decreased muscle mass, connective tissue diseases, alcoholic liver diseases, and, and rheumatoid arthritis. Our next enzyme is lactate dehydrogenase, or LD, sometimes called LDH. Um, so um, lactate dehydrogenase is catalyzes the reversible oxidation of lactate to pyruvate. So um, normally, if you remember in energy production, um, during uh, glycolysis, your glucose molecule is broken down into two pyruvate, and then the pyruvate molecules are sent into the mitochondria to produce ATP. 
Uh, but if that process, that the process in a mitochondria requires oxygen, if oxygen is not present and that process cannot take place, then something has to be done with the pyruvate and uh, we can uh, transform the pyruvate into lactate and then lactate can be transformed later back into pyruvate. Uh, lactate is also lactic acid and is uh, what would accumulate in your muscles and make your muscles sore if you've been doing a lot of anaerobic type uh, exercises. Um, which would cause a production of lactic acid because you're going past the the threshold where you're using the oxygen. Okay, so LD activity will exist in all cells, so it's very non-specific. Uh, concentrations are higher in the cytoplasm of the cell than um, in the serum, and you see significant activity of LDH in heart, liver, red blood cells, kidney, and skeletal muscles, which would kind of all have energy you know, maybe higher energy requirements and stuff like that. And um, you ha there are isoenzymes of lactate dehydrogenase to have the M and the H uh, subunits, but they're just not, we used to do them a lot, and we just really don't do isoenzyme analysis for lactate dehydrogenase anymore. So usually it's a total level that is um, checked. So significant elevation of LDH can be seen in pernicious anemia, megaloblastic anemia, hemolytic anemias, uh, cardiovascular accidents or strokes and stuff like that in some cancers. The range is 100 to 300 international units per liter. And the lab methods is usually the LD activity is measured using the Ford catalyzed reaction of lactate to pyruvate. Um, and, um, and then measure, it's usually measuring um, NAD or NAD, NADH um, production. So the lactate dehydrogenase is found in red cells, so hemolyse samples are unacceptable for analysis. It would yield a falsely elevated results and would not be helpful for you. So there you go. That's my last slide on CK, review on CK and LDH. Thank you for your attention.